and welcome to Coopersville, Michigan, everybody. My name is Josh the RV Nerd, and this is one of our many Bishes RV locations. Today we're looking at a 27... I don't know. Rear kitchen bedside flagstaff. I forgot the number. I speak Rockwood model numbers better than I speak flagstaff. This one, if I boiled it down over simply, if you've seen the Grand Design Imagine 2670 MK, which is a model I love, it's got like a rear desk, opposing living room slides, and a televator to give you maximized uh, window coverage over on the campsite. It's very similar to that, but they, uh, they, they, they did some rock staff do and rock staff things here, and they threw a bed slide into this thing. Now, what's ironic about that is sometimes um, uh, Rockwood and Flagstaff propensity to do plus one more than anybody else also tends to be their greatest liability because that brings this one up where it's a little bit heavier has a little bit more tongue weight i don't really recommend this for a half ton pickup which eliminates a lot of potential buyers so i hope you appreciate the candid safety information that we're willing to share right up front here what that i do think it's a good three quarter ton and above i don't think you need a one ton or a dually to handle this but we've got opposing living slides we've got a theater seat with like a, a removable armrest basically to become a giant cuddle couch if you want it straight across from the entertainment center or you can get that out of the way and just have a massive big like buffet serving station if you're going to have some folks over or if you just don't want to watch tv and want to watch your campsite you've got dual power awnings on this thing despite the fact that this is about as short as you can get a bed slide triple slide travel trailer they still made sure that they maximized the patio coverage they came up with an extremely clever and i think exceptionally well done mini camp kitchen on this enclosed belly goodyear tires tpms uh um oh this is advanced notice, so we're watching a 22 video right now, but an update for you, a preview for the 2023s, they will now be adopting double Asdell in the walls of these things. So this 22 doesn't have that, but the 23s will. All right, so as we go through today's video, if you could do me a favor, let me know the kind of stuff that you like about this model, and then like one or two things that you would change given the opportunity. And I'm going to try to point out the good with the bad with everything in between so that you can be very educated on what we are and are not looking at here. Now, like I said, the general layout here, very similar to a 2670 uh, Imagine. This is actually Rockwood and Flagstaff. I call them Rockstaff. They're the same RV, by the way. This is their second uh, version of this floor plan. I think it has significantly improved uh, upon the first. But they're going to still do some of their signature features. Like they have a little bit larger um, love seat theater sofa combo. Also, Anytime you see these little overhead bendy lights, if you get up close and personal with them, you may notice there's also some USB plugs on those things. Now we're going to see there's more uh, power outlet action available around that theater seat as we go. Today we're looking at a booth dinette. A table and chairs is most certainly an available option on this one. And it's kind of cool because like this is an island kitchen model, but it doesn't really feel nearly as bossy and intrusive as a lot of other ones were because I think they were able to build this island a little bit smaller due to the fact that over here on the door side of the RV, you've got about a freaking acre of countertop space, Batman. Now, you might notice there's a little bit of a level change there. That is, I have to believe, completely intentional because that is our power televator location uh, up there above the electric space heat and Tootsie Toaster. If there were some kind of spillages, then there would be a ledge that's going to prevent that from getting over to your electronics. You may also notice if you start measuring up, they use a little bit bigger, it's like 40% larger microwave in here as compared to most travel trailers, and that is a larger 22 inch oven versus a, uh, a common 16 inch easy bake oven. Uh, the standard here is what we're looking at, 12 volt DC compressor fridge measuring 10.7 cubic foot in capacity. But you, you might have some travel access concerns with this. I will close the slides up on this and I'll show you this RV's accessibility and travel mode. And what you're going to find out is there is refrigerator access in transit, just maybe not what you were thinking. More on that later. Solid surface countertops uh, in uh, encompassing a stainless sink. And uh, it might be a little bit of a knee bonker because of where the sink's located, but... I think that that might serve as a little bit of a breakfast bar right there. Now, this is one of the interesting things. I'd really love to know what you guys think about this. Back in this corner is where Grand Design puts a desk. They don't have all of the drawers that this one has here. So this one has more storage back here as a result, but it doesn't really have a desk function unless you're going to repurpose the dinette over here, which I could certainly see... Uh, somebody doing it just really depends on how you sort of want to go about it you know 
Um, there is, by the way, also a trifold sleeper sofa hide a bed option available on this. Uh, in case you wanted some kind of different or greater guest capacity. You could actually build this with zero guest capacity or with room for three or five. Let's look up here at the AC system. You have a choice on this RV between um, 30 and 50 amp, one and two airs, but you will always have that double ducted air system giving you more airflow. And every one of these is vented and louvered, which is the technical way of saying they can turn and they can close individually. So you could really kind of control your airflow very, very well within this RV. Um, down below, we have the electric space heating uh, bunion burner or uh, calf cooker, depending on how closely you're standing to it or, or away from it. And then again, up here, you see how you've got that cool door side window. Notice how there's a full viewing window with a shade in the entry door. Well, if what you're looking for is max entertainment, obviously you've got that power televator right there. Now, at a glance, you start saying, oh, there's not a lot of kitchen drawer storage. That's because this has a mini outside camp kitchen, and we're going to get to see that. However, along the rear wall here and below the island, you see next to that fridge, you've got a good pantry space and all of that drawer storage over there um, beside the pantry. Now, uh, you know, the booth tonight can become a sleeper. It's a free floating table, though. And where I think that could be cool is you could use it over here in front of the, uh, the sofa, if you were so inclined, if you wanted a little bit of a Dinofa action straight across the TV, like Back to the Future, is like, whoa, ho, ho, look at him roll. Now we can watch Jackie Gleason while we eat. And did you notice no cloth pleated shades? These were all uh, blackout roller blinds, which I think is kind of cool. Um, as we slowly spin our way around, just to help you kind of, there's not really anything to look at on the forward wall over here. And it does... I, I, if there is one thing on this RV that feels underdone, which is saying a lot because Rockwood doesn't tend to underdo anything, that wall feels blank, but it's because it's right next to the slide out. They really couldn't mount anything onto it. What is there, though, is our solar charge controller because this has a factory standard solar package. A little more on that when we get outside. For now, though, we're going to uh, hop up around the corner and get to the bathroom before I sneeze. <laughs> okay, <laughs> something in the air right here. All right, I'm good. <laughs> Sorry. All right, so by default, we've got a 60 by 80 True Queen East-West bed slide in here. Queen bed, you might notice, gives you little side stands uh, inside of there. And remember how I talked about the USB plugs whenever you see those bendy lights. That's going to be another uh, space where you might find those things right there. Bedside breeze windows, you still have the blackout roller shades, although the very front windshield, which is kind of cool that that's included on this, it does have the uh, the pull-down blind styles. Now, over here, you see your household USB plugs, but a third box above that. That is our um, inverter remote switch. If you want to be able to turn that off or on, that's where you could do it. Now, this is very interesting. Even though they have a full nose cap on this, they still do a one-inch laminated wall on the front of Rockstaff RVs um, and run a radiant barrier uh, foil layer up and down that. It's kind of different. It's kind of cool. I don't know. It seems to work anyway. Now, like I said, we have 30 or 50 amp options. The RV that we're looking at today is 50 amp service, but only single air. So a second air could be added to this, or maybe you want to just put like a big XL vent fan or something up in there, whatever, I don't know, might uh, might work for you. Let's take a look at the under bed storage here. It's kind of cool. You can lift the bed, but you don't have to. They kind of make the storage come to you. And the way that they did this, it's not a full front nose uh, closet. Instead, the, the closet is like across from you with the entertainment center. It's a little different but it seems to work very well for a lot of people. And again, this design basically shaves like two or three feet and a lot of weight and a lot of cost off this RV. Now, that being said, that's relative speaking. It, it, it shaves a lot of weight and cost as compared to what it could be. Um, these are never the least expensive brand of RV you're ever going to find out there. As we uh, work our way around the corner, I suppose this is a good a time to any to break the news that this is a dual entry bed and bath. You've got dual doors, although you could always shut one door or the other down. You may have noticed up top here, you don't have the four inch fart fan. Instead, you've got the Taco Tuesday Delight up there, really providing some superior airflow. Um, and over here, 
Uh, basically, not quite floor to ceiling uh, linen storage, but good depth, good shape. It's rectangular, it's not weird and triangular. That bottom access door down there, that's for your water pump and water filter, so that's not a storage compartment. Porcelain foot flush stool, which is fairly fluffy friendly, if I do say so myself right there. And then uh, the, uh, the shower over here. I've got the doors open so you can see inside because one of the cool things they have here is the shower miser. Now, I don't know if you noticed, I am sweating today. And if you look a little closely, you might notice how that is not as dark blue as it often is in my videos. It's almost got a white tinge to it. That is what the shower miser does. You remember those hyper touch, like heat sensing shirts? Kind of the same thing. When you flip the shower miser switch, what happens is the water recycles back into the fresh tank and it sits there and it continues to cycle and warm up until it gets to shower uh, temperature. When that blue bend becomes white, that is when you know the water is uh, heated and can now be, uh, you know, it's, it's shower time. That way, if you're boondocking, you don't need to worry about the shower miser if you're in a camp setting. But if you're boondocking, well, then it's like Maxwell House and you keep your fresh tank good till the last drop. Now, what about the travel and access road mode back here? You see that refrigerator? Well, now you see it. Now you don't. So at first you're going, oh, dude, seriously? Another one of these where you can't get to the refrigerator and transit. Then you come around the corner like, oh, and then you go, oh no, I was right. You can't get to it. Hang with me here. Because this is where the extra things that Rockwood and Flagstaff do really comes into play. Can you access that refrigerator and transit? No. Is there a refrigerator that you can access in transit and can be powered and operating in transit? Yeah. Let's step outside and take a look. Now, remember when we began our video here, one of the things I said is Rockstaff's uh, inclination to do anything you can do, I can do better plus one. You know, it makes them really fun and really cool. Sometimes though, it also is their own little hiccup point. Because they went as short as they possibly could to give us a bed slide, that means they didn't have room for a full front pass through. The good news, you do have a very healthy chunk of space over here under the headboard area of the bed. So if you need a place to like put your hitch when you get undone or something like that, you can. Now, you see that aluminum skeleton work down there under the bed. Um, anytime something is going to be load bearing. So uh, the, the skeletal structure, the entire skeleton of this RV is aluminum framed and welded. Um, a booth dinette or a bed, something that might hold the weight of a person will have a welded aluminum cage from uh, Rockstaff, which is kind of cool. Uh, you may also notice they are a heavy user of lamination. This is a five-sided laminated product. You can walk right up and just hammer fist those uh, slide end walls right there. That's something one of my viewers reminded me. I used to punch the crap out of these things with my little chicken arms, which can't, in case you're curious, there's no way I could possibly hurt this thing with my skinny little lady fingers that run a keyboard for a living. I am not a hammer swinging man's man. So don't, don't worry about me thumping on something every now and then. But regardless, that's something I hadn't done in a while. I thought, eh, you know what? I'm gonna bring that back. Um, all the windows are tinted and that is a front wind shield, not a window. It's a uh, like a, a dual pane bonded automotive glass. So it's going to be uh, extremely impact resistant. Did I say it is impervious to rock impacts? No, it's, ex it's, it's very unlikely and uncommon that happens. I watch owner's forums. I know it has happened. I'm not ignorant to the fact and I don't mind having a real conversation with you. Up front here, power tongue jack and 30 pound propane tanks instead of 20s. That's a more rare, uncommon find. We got power tongue jacks over here and on the way down, you'll see almost hidden their little side mount solar prep plug in case you wanna get a portable panel and park in the shade and chase the sun. The roof of this does have a factory standard solar package. We'll look at that in just a second. While we're down here taking a knee like uh, Tim Tebow, we've got an enclosed underbelly, radiant barrier package along the belly, up the nose, and then um, 12 volt tank heaters have been standard on these products for longer than anybody else has even thought about doing it. Now, uh, a peek up at the roof line. Let's go from the bottom to the top here. Uh, you see you do actually have a ladder to get yourself up there. 190 watt factory roof solar package standard, 1000 watt inverter standard. And there's almost nobody in this class offering any level of inversion standard. A lot of people are gonna say thousand watts, that's not a whole lot. It's a thousand more than most brands do. So that's not nothing in, in my book. That's my opinion anyway. 
Um, you can also outfit this again with a second AC that would be installed up in that bedroom and you saw the max air vent covers over those XL power vent fans. Uh, again, dual power awnings on here, which is great. Because this is a shorter total length as compared to most triple slide RVs, it would mean that they also would normally have less uh, awning space. You see the TV hookup outside between our little um, utility shelf station and the griddle that comes included with this. These are also those zero gravity stable steps that are strutted and self-supporting. Now hidden away down here a little bit, we've got Goodyear Endurance radials. What you're not seeing is that they come with a factory standard tire pressure monitoring system so you know your pressure when you're zipping down the life's highway and um you know our beautiful nation's highway that is also riding on torsion axles and suspension so that is something that will give us a little bit better ride and handling this right here i think though is very cool so um they came up with a revised mini camp kitchen that i personally think is about one of the best that i've seen we got dad's medicine cabinet right there which is wired to the inverter going down the road that refrigerator is still powered most outside refrigerators are not so that thousand watt inverter it's a thousand watts more than everybody else super handy super handy right there now a lot of brands will slide a griddle out of here well, Rockstaff says, you already got a griddle. So they include either just a slide out little utility prep space or an additional little side dish cooker over here that just sort of slides shut, slides in. That's, I don't know, that's different, but I kind of like that. I think that's pretty darn smart. Now, I mentioned how this is a full aluminum skeleton, but it's a five-sided laminated product. Usually, the roof of an RV is not laminated. That's not the case here. In fact, it's the floor that's not laminated. They have an aluminum skeleton, like a giant fifth wheel, but they also have a 5 8 tongue and groove plywood floor decking. So there were many years that went by where Rockwood was laminating their floors, and at first it seemed fine. Well, what they found is that they weren't building enough structure into the floor, and they were developing soft spots. So they were one of the very first brands that said, forget that. And in like 2015 or 2016, they stopped laminating their floors and they went to this heavy duty plywood floor structure, which is basically the exact same thing that you're gonna find on a big heavyweight luxury fifth wheel. Now, when we first began and several times through this video, I compare this one to a Grand Design 2670. If, you, if that's just numbers to you, if you don't know what that means, I will leave you a link to that one to check this one out uh, in the video description. I'll also leave you a link where you can see pricing and availability on, on, on this one. I cannot say availability lately here. <laughs> 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 uh, pricing and availability will be linked in the video description. There will be two links. One with the Flagstaff model, one with the Rockwood model. Sometimes we're sold out of one the other or maybe both. It just depends. Um, and keep in mind, they give you different interior decor options, different exterior skit. Actually, hold on. So we're seeing the optional white exterior right here. I'm going to walk you down. And we're looking at one of the small guys right here but this is actually the the standard chocolate brown exterior on this right here so just to kind of give you an a b comparison you can get it in that little executive graphite white or you can get it in the uh you know the chocolate champagne brown that we just saw there whichever flavor best fits your palate i don't know i'm wrapping this up thank you if you appreciate how we tell you the good with the bad like the travel access or whatever hit that subscribe button catch us on the next one. Take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping everyone. Mm -hmm.